Welcome to the Flying Out of Bounds tutorial. And in this video, we're going to give the illusion of this snowboarder that is just flying out of a photograph into space. And the snow is following behind him. And it's a really, really cool technique and a really cool effect that is extremely popular right now. And so I thought I would go ahead and include it on the DVD and show you how it's done. One of the coolest things of all is that the background, if I go ahead and lower the opacity of the background, you can see that the snow bursting out of the photograph is transparent. I can even go over here to image adjustments and adjust the color of the background and you can see that it does not affect the snow. So we can go ahead and slide any background behind this out of bounds image here to match our website or another type of background. And that's the cool thing is that I'm going to show you some techniques, some masking techniques that you can use so we can achieve this effect that you see right here. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to undo this and let's begin the project. Let's go back to the file browser and I want you to open up the stock image with the snowboarder here. Now you can use your own images at home, but I would recommend that for the first time you do this is to use the image that I have. That way you can be sure that you get the same result as I do. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this to load it up into Photoshop. And we'll go ahead and just move this out of bounds image here out of the way and we'll start fresh on this image. And I'll zoom into it here. Alright, and the very first thing, let's go ahead and create a background for this out of bounds effect. Now you can see that the photo of the snowboarder is actually the background currently, so that's really not going to work for us. We need to create a new layer and drag it below this layer of the snowboarder. And so what I'll do is over here on the layers palette, I will make a new layer and let's call this one background. This is the real background. And then I'll double click on the original background here and just give it a name, snowboarder, and go ahead and drag this layer above the background, the new background layer that we've created. And I can mint, or just I can make this invisible right now. And then what I'll do is select the paint bucket tool and change the foreground to black and then just click and I'll click on that background, make sure that's activated and I'll click on the image and that will fill the background with black. So now we're working over a black background. Let's go back to the snowboarder uh, image here and go ahead and make that visible. Okay, before we start anything such as the masking or the out of bounds special effects, what we must do first is create the actual shape of the picture frame. You can see here on the completed project, we have this picture frame here. Almost looks like a photograph that the snowboarder is jumping out of. Well, this shape is really not that hard to create, but we must do that first so we can determine where that will be on the image. So to begin, let's go ahead and activate the snowboarder layer and then just go ahead and click on the new layer icon, make a new layer right now. And I want you to call that picture frame. Easy enough. And then so what we're going to do now is draw the shape of the picture frame that the snowboarder is jumping out of. And so over here on the toolbar, select the rectangular marquee tool and just come over to the image, click and drag out or draw out a selection that sort of resembles the size of a picture frame or a photo. Just like this. And I'll probably make it just a little bit bigger than I need because that way if I resize it, it'll retain some of its quality. That looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be really perfect. You can come back and perfect this technique later on. So after we've created our selection like you see here, let's go ahead and just fill that with a color. So let's just use white. I'll press D and X on the keyboard and when I do that, that'll change the foreground color to white. 
I can flip back and forth between those keys. When I have the foreground white, I'll go ahead and click in the middle of the selection there to fill that. Great. Let's come up here to select, deselect. So after we filled that, let's just go right over here to the layers palette. On that picture frame layer, I just want you to lower the opacity of that, just so you can see the background behind it. And this will help us decide uh, if we can see the background behind the shape, that will help us decide where to position it. And so let's go over here to edit and down here to transform and select distort. And distort, all we have to do is bring the mouse pointer over to each corner or one of the corners on the shape here. And you can just move it around and really create any type of shape we want. But we, our goal here is to create some type of perspective, uh, some type of three-dimensional shape or photo or picture frame, whatever you want to call it. And so we're just going to go ahead and just move this around here. You can click in the middle of this selected shape and move it as well. And so I'm just going to move this down. And this is going to be my little photograph that the, that the, that the snowboarder is jumping out of. So it really depends. You know, you can make it long, small. You can really do whatever you want, as long as it's big enough so he has plenty of room to jump out of the photo. And we can also go up here to Edit, Free Transform before we confirm this, and we can also just resize it. See, even if I'm not fully satisfied on the shape yet, I can switch back and forth between different transformation modes. Isn't that cool? Let's go ahead and click back on Distort. And I'll continue distorting this image. Now, this is where you're going to have to use a pretty good eye uh, for this perspective because perspective does have certain rules. Uh, it may not look realistic. If Most of the time though, to make this as easy as possible, most of the time when things are closer to you, they are a little bit taller. You see that? And then when they're farther away, they, they get a little bit smaller. So you can see the sides on this are just a little bit wider, a little bit taller. And then when it goes to inward, you can see it just gets a little bit smaller over here. And that's just an, kind of an easy way just to uh, figure that out. Besides making something that looks like this, that's that's just not going to look right. But if I make this side over here smaller, then that'll give the illusion that it has perspective and it has a little bit of a three-dimensional look to it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to make that just a little bit taller and bring this in a little bit. When you do this, you sort of have to imagine the end result. You can see if real closely, if you, oops, if you see real closely here, and it's not going to let me select another tool, so I'm just going to have to show you with this mouse. But if you look at the snow, how it's just coming out, if you can kind of imagine it coming out of the picture frame, you see that? And then we're getting the very bottom here with little tiny bits. See, if I come down too low, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to make that look is real and it's almost too small but I like right where this little snow cloud just right where it ends or the edge of it I'm just gonna position that right there that looks pretty good I'm happy with that I even might just go just a little bit more okay great let's go ahead and move on to the next step but before we do that we must confirm this selection here so what I'm gonna do is just press the enter key on the keyboard and that will confirm that. All right, great. Now the next step, what we're going to do is isolate the snow and the snowboarder from the background. Now don't panic. This is really, it's not that difficult. But what I'm going to do is over here on the toolbar, let's just go down here and select the polygonal lasso. And if you need to, you can go ahead and just zoom into the image just a little bit more if it makes it easier. But what we must do is we're going to select a round, or I can even grab just, let me grab this uh, paintbrush here. What we're going to do is just draw a selection down the side of the frame, or just a little bit inward, and we're going to go around the snowboarder, 
And then what we're going to do is copy this out of the background and then paste it on its own layer, on its own separate layer. And then that way we can go in there and crop and mask and, and do all sorts of things to just this section. Because really, this is the only section that is going to be out of the photo. Everything else is going to be retained. The mountains and the sky and all that other stuff around it is going to be inside the photo. So, so let's go back to the toolbar, select the polygonal lasso tool. All right. Now we're going to keep this shape visible, this uh, picture frame sh uh, layer here visible so we can see exactly where we're going here with this polygonal lasso. And so what I'm going to do is just click Start, I'll start up here and then click and just go inside the shape just a little bit. It doesn't have to be very far. And then I will click and we're going to click and make a selection around the snow and the snow border. Look at that. Perfect. Now let's make that picture frame invisible. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here to edit and copy merge. That will just copy everything that we see inside the selection. So edit, copy merged, edit once more, and down here to paste. And that'll put it on its own separate layer. And now we can make that picture frame visible again if we'd like. But we see, it's, we see that selected area over the picture frame. But you know what? Don't worry about it. That's fine because here's a really cool tip. Hold down control, click on the picture frame, and that's, by the way, that's command on the Mac. So hold down control, command on the Mac, click on the picture frame, and select its transparency. Now click on layer one, which is, we haven't named that layer yet. Go ahead and press the delete key, and now you've just trimmed that up perfectly. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and name that. I'm just gonna name it Snowboard Cropped. And that will also include the snow and everything like that. I think we will go ahead and make the snow on its own separate layer later on. But this is this is good for now. Let's go up here to select and deselect. Okay, great. Now what we must do is crop the snow border out of that layer. So it's just a snow border and nothing else. Let's go ahead and zoom in to the snow border here. And all we have to do is select the pen tool on the toolbar, and I might even just get a little bit closer to the back of this board here. I'm going to select that pen tool, and I'm going to look really closely and just draw a path around just the snowboarder and nothing else. So that means the snowboard, the guy himself, the jacket, the hat, everything. Keep in mind that this exact same process can be used on almost any photo. If you have a rabbit jumping out of a cage, or you have an airplane flying through a house, or whatever you want, you can apply the same techniques here and get almost the same result as we are on this image. All right, now I'm getting very close to where I began the path, and I will just click at the beginning of the path to connect the path entirely. Now let's go ahead and zoom out. Great. 
Now let's go ahead and make a selection of the path or make create, uh, convert the path into a selection. Easy way to do this is to just right click in the middle of the path anywhere inside and you'll get a little bit a little tiny menu will pop up. And you can select make selection. Now when the options come up, just keep the feather radius 0 in the anti-aliased option. Make sure that is checked and go ahead and click OK and now you'll see a selection around the, the snowboarder. So let's go over here to edit, copy merged, edit, paste. And now you can see that we've pasted this snowboarder on its own layer and now it is isolated. It's just by itself. And now you can see what we've done so far. Okay. However, there are there is a little spot here, or maybe a couple spots. I think it's just one spot on this that we we're going to have to go through here and just take out this little spot. We can still see the sky coming through there. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And if you want, you can go ahead and just name this. You can put uh, snowboarder only. And what I'll do is grab the pin tool and cut this area out. Okay, so now that we've created the path around this little spot here, I'm going to go ahead and right click, select Make Selection, click OK, and then press Delete on the keyboard. And now our snowboarder is completely isolated from the back. Looks like to me that we do have some other, we do have a lot of color seeping through on the edges of the snowboarder. This is not too much to worry about right now. We can come back and do this later, but I think while I'm at it, what I'm going to do is hold down control, command on the Mac, and just click on the snowboarder only layer, and then select, modify, contract that by about one pixel, and then select inverse, and then let's press the delete key on the keyboard select, deselect. And now we'll get rid of that blue glow from the sky that we had around the snowboarder. Great. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And this is what we have so far. All right. So what are we going to do next? Well, we do have the snow to mask. Here is the snow busting out of the picture frame. doesn't really look like it's coming out of the picture frame yet. But we are going to achieve that effect in just a moment here. So, all right, I'm going to make that snow border only layer invisible. And the picture frame layer, we could probably leave that the way it is now. No big deal there. And so, but make sure that the snowboard cropped layer is selected. And what I think I'll do is just hold down control, command on the Mac, click on the snowboard cropped layer and load its transparency and then just click on edit copy merged then what I want you to do is go over to the channels palette if you don't see it window uh, channels is right here over here on the channels palette let's make a new channel by clicking on the new channel button right here at the very bottom there you go you should see the screen go black and then just come over here to edit and over here to paste and you'll paste this image into a channel. Great. Now we no longer need this selected, so I'm just going to come up here to select and deselect that. Now what we must do is isolate the snow from the background. We can see that the snow is pretty bright compared to the sky in the background. It looks impossible, but it's not. Let me show you a little cool technique. Let's go over here to Image, Adjustments, and select levels 
And with the levels, what we can do is control the tones in this channel. It's very cool stuff. Now, if I move this white slider over to the left, you can see that the snow gets brighter. And if I move the black one over to the right, you can see some of the mid-tones start to get darker and darker and darker. And that's what we want. Now, for this tutorial, other out-of-bounds images or other out-of-bounds projects will probably be a lot different. But for this tutorial, when you're looking at the snow, make sure that you don't overexpose the snow because that's just going to ruin the effect. You don't want that. So make sure that it doesn't look like this. Okay. Better yet, you may even just be able to leave this white slider here in the channels or in the levels. You might even be able to just leave that the way it is now and not, not even touch it at all. So I'll just leave that way down here, but I will come over and adjust the black slider to make that background disappear. Almost make, almost make the snowboarder there, the guy there, go away. But I'll I'll adjust the gray slider here so we can adjust the mid tones, looking really good. And I'll, I'll even go just a little bit more. And the more I move that black slider to the right, you can see it just makes the mid tone areas start to go away. They keep getting darker and darker and darker. And that is how we can isolate the snow. Isn't that cool? So that looks really good. Let's go ahead and click OK. We can always come back and retouch later on. No big deal. OK. Look at what we have here. This is totally posh. It's looking great. In order to get the snow on the photo completely isolated from the background, this is what you're going to do. Hold down the control key, which is the command key on the Mac. Hold that down right now. Click on the Alpha 1 channel that we've created, and look what happens. You will load the snow that's on that channel. You will load it. It almost looks like you're loading its transparency, but what you're really doing is you're selecting the brightest areas, and it will look at the image and, and, and select most of the defined areas. It's also selecting a lot more than we can see right now. And that's just the way it is. And a lot of people just starting with Photoshop don't know that. But it looks like it's just selecting the area right here, but it's selecting a lot more. And that's going to help us out tremendously. So after you've selected or after you've held down the control key and clicked on that channel, it should look like this. Okay, now let's go back to RGB mode. So click on RGB, go back to Layers, and let's look at what we have here. Okay, let's go ahead and down here to Snowboard Cropped. Just make that invisible. Then you can make the Snowboarder Only layer visible. So now we see the Snowboarder and we see the selected snow from the channel. Well, we need to get that snow on its own separate layer. And what we can do is just make a new layer between the Snowboarder Only layer and the Snowboarder Cropped layer. So what I'll do is just go ahead activate the snowboard cropped layer and make a new layer below that and simple enough we'll just call it snow there we go now let's go over here to edit fill and for contents let's select white and click OK look at that this almost looks perfect let's go up here to select and deselect so we can see our work now to see what the out of bounds effect looks like all we have to do is mask the background here just into the shape that we've created on the picture frame layer. Well, this is really easy to do. Let's click on the picture frame layer, turn the opacity all the way up to 100%, and now let's hold down the control key and click on the picture frame layer. Then over here on the snowboard layer, let's click on the add layer mask button. Boom. Ooh, doesn't look like much happened, but look at this. If I go over to the picture frame layer and make that invisible, look what happens. So this is where we get, we're getting very close to the actual final effect that we're trying to achieve here. So what we're going to do next is actually create the picture frame for this shape. All right. First, I'm going to go ahead and go full screen on this by clicking on this little button right there, and I will hold down the space bar and just move this down a little bit. 
what we're going to want to do is make a new layer and call it frame. So let's click on the topmost layer and make a new layer on top of that. And I'll double click on layer one and just go ahead and call that frame for short. Now let's go over to the toolbar and I want you to select the polygonal lasso tool. And then we are going to draw the frame with the polygonal lasso tool. Now keep in mind that when you're drawing your frame, you want to make sure that the thickness of the frame is thicker in the front on the side of the picture that's closest to you. It's thicker on that side than it is on the side that is more farther away from the camera, which is down here. So select the polygonal lasso tool and what we're going to do is just, let me zoom in just a little bit more here so you can see what's going on. And I'm just going to position this polygonal right here, just almost like up the top left, but I'm going to come down just a little bit. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag across to the other side of the photo. I'm going to click and drag down and then right about here. That looks good. And then as I work my way back, I want to keep in mind that I want it to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to come down right about here and click and then drag up to where we've started the selection, which is up here. And as soon as I see that little circle on the bottom right on the polygonal asshole tool, you see that appear? Well, as soon as we see that, then it will make a selection. So. That looks great. Well, let's go ahead and come up here to select. And I want you to inverse that selection. I want you to come over here to edit, over here to fill, and fill it with white. Now the whole screen just went white and it looks like we've totally messed everything up, but don't worry, everything is okay. I want you to hold down the control key, and that's the command key on the Mac, and I want you to click on the picture frame layer to load its transparency. See, we still have the frame layer active at the very top, but we've loaded that transparency of the picture frame layer. Now what we can do is come over here to select, inverse the selection once more, come over to the keyboard, and press the delete key. And I think on the Mac that may be the delete key that's above the return key, but this is the effect that we're looking for. Let's come up here to select and deselect. Super. That's looking like an out-of-bounds effect. However, there's a few things that we can go back and touch up. And let me show you. I'm going to select the zoom tool. Let's go ahead and zoom into the image and expect our work. You can see where we've set the snow for this. You can see that we do have sort of a jagged edge on right here going down the very back of our picture frame. That's okay. There's a lot of ways to fix that. So what we can do here is just select the snow layer and I can move that in a little bit and there you go, now it went away. So you can see how easy it is to fix little things like this. But for those of you that don't have Photoshop CS2, you are not able to select two layers at once. So what I advise, if you're, what I'm going to show you here is a way that you can do it on any version. So select the snow layer, select the move tool, and just use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move the snow just to the left once and down once, just like that. And I'll select the snow border only layer and do the exact same thing for that. I'll go over to the left once and you can barely see it on the screen here and I'll go down once. There we go. And now we don't have that edge causing this tangent or this conflict there. Let's go ahead and zoom out and see what we have. Okay, now we are not quite done yet. If you look very closely at the snow border, you can see that the reflection from the snow is hitting the snow border. Well, this is just because the sky is above the snow. The sky is shining down at the snow. The snow is picking up the reflection from the sky. 
in the original photo. And what's happening is that is now that is shooting up and it's hitting the bottom of the snowboarder and it's making the bottom of this snowboard blue. Well, we can do a color correction on that to make this look just a little bit more realistic. So to remove the color cast off of the snowboarder, since there is no reflections any longer, this is super simple. All we have to do is come over here to Image, Adjustments, and then come down here to Auto Color. Now, Auto Color will most of the time do the trick. Look at that. And now let's zoom out of the image. Looking pretty hot. Now, there's a couple more things that we can do here to make it look like that snowboarder is really there we can brighten up the image. So I can come over here to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and I can brighten that guy up just a little bit more. Look at that, to make him stand out. This is before. You can see it's just a little bit dark, but if you really want him to stand out, just go ahead and add a little more brightness, just to polish it off. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and look at our work to make sure we did a good job. I'm gonna go ahead and make the background invisible and I can see the snow coming out of the photo. And if I turn down the opacity of the background, we can still see that the snow is transparent. Now, when you're creating your own out of bounds images at home, what you can do is just experiment with different backgrounds. So I can come over here to image adjustments, hue and saturation, colorize the background, and just brighten it up a little bit. And you can do all different types of stuff here. Look at that. So that is how we can create an out of bounds effect or give the illusion that somebody is just flying out of a photograph in Photoshop. And we'll see you guys on the next video.